This is Mark, and this is The Country Life with Columbus Mark, where I try to give you a lighthearted look at life in the country. And in today's episode, I'm starting a new playlist called Conversations from the Road. This is Tom Flynn, and he has been traveling for three months in this travel trailer behind us here, and we're going to hear a little bit about his story. So this is Tom, and I met him just a few days ago when he heard about my little location here that I do allow people to come camp, uh, if they're nice people, and he is. And Tom, by the way, is 76 years old. He's long past a midlife crisis, but this man over here has swagger. He has done so much in just the last few years it would blow your mind. And he didn't give me a resume, but I, I, I've heard about some of the things he's done. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about some of that. But for three months, I guess he's been trying to find your, himself. Have you, Tom? Well, I would put it this way. I, and I appreciate that introduction, Mark. You're very generous. This is a beautiful place. You're letting me stay here and very quiet and comfortable. Um, no, I, I am trying to find myself in a sense, you know, uh, I sold my house in Annapolis. I'd lived, Annapolis, Maryland, had lived there for 31 years. Wow. I was very comfortable there, but I decided it was time to move. Uh, and yet, I didn't want to, it was hard to part with that property. I loved it. I lived near the Chesapeake Bay, had a great neighborhood, very safe and friendly. And yet, my family now lives in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have a son and daughter-in-law with three small children, and I thought it was a good time to be near them. And yet, I had to uproot myself. So I figured that uh, traveling in my trailer would be a good kind of transition. Uh, and that's why I've taken three months. But after traveling from uh, North Carolina to Maryland, back to Maryland, to Pennsylvania, to Connecticut, to uh, Maine, to Vermont, New York, Ohio, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, uh, Louisiana. That's not all on this three month trip, is it? This is all on this three month trip. Um, uh, Texas. Oh my gosh. And then I came back through Mississippi and Alabama. I just got behind that hurricane Ida that passed last week, um, passed through Tennessee, and here I am in North Carolina. I thought yesterday, as I was walking through the beautiful Pearson Falls, which is only 20 miles from here, I thought I finally decided to settle well, 20 down. 20 minutes from here, not 20 miles. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. Maybe it took you 20 miles to get there, but it's 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got lost, but it's a beautiful place. It was there that I, and I was sort of meditating a little bit on the waterfall and the beautiful stream there. I thought maybe I'm about to, I'm in the process of finding myself. And I'm getting ready to settle down in North Carolina and be a, a resident of this state. So long and short of it is, uh, it's been a long journey and much more before that, even, even when I was living in Annapolis, because I've made some long trips. But it's, um, I feel comfortable here. I like North Carolina, what I've seen of it, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Well, I'm glad he stopped here because uh... You know, I've just opened up the place to people to come through, and he's actually my first official visitor. And we've hit it off. We have a beer every night, and probably one during the afternoon. And it's been fun, but I'm gonna tell you a couple things that I've learned is one, at age 70, he goes back to college. Is that right? Yes. What, were you 70 or 70, or older than 70? Uh, I was uh, 70. So he goes to Savannah College of Art and Design, right? Right. SCAD well-known art school and what were you decided to do? Uh, I studied city, uh, excuse me, I studied sound design. I'd had a career in city planning and real estate development for 36 years. I decided to try something new just to stimulate. At, at age degree. 70? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, did you get that degree? I did. Uh, I, I studied sound design for a year and then uh, went out to Portland, Oregon where I worked uh, briefly for uh, Oregon Public Broadcasting, and then I worked for a local radio station, KBOO, famous community station, and produced my own shows, and then came back to Baltimore and worked at the NPR station there, WYPR. Wow. 
Well, well, I'm just going to tell my our viewers here that I will soon be 70. I'm not going back to college. Okay, so I'll take. This guy has also, by the way, ridden a motorcycle from where to where. Tell us about that trip, or briefly. Sure, I mean. briefly. Um, <laughs> that could go on, but I, I started in Annapolis, my home at the time, and I traveled to Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in the world. That's a great Scrabble word. U S H U A I A. Never Ushuaia. Yeah. It's the southern tip of South America. Uh, I came back to Santiago, Chile. That was uh, 17. On the motorcycle too, as well. Yes. So yes. you didn't sell it down there. Get... No, they have a lot of laws about selling oh, really? property down there, especially vehicles and motorcycles. No, I came back and then shipped it back to Baltimore. But anyway, that was a 17,000 mile trip. Oh Total time on the road was about five months. Although I did it over a period of a year. Were you a solo traveler? I was. I traveled with people I met along the way. And some of them were going parts of that way, and some were going um, longer, shorter parts. I met a, made a good friend from Montevideo, Uruguay, and I traveled with him along the Andes. I met a Canadian guy, and we traveled together through Tierra del Fuego and Patagonia. There were segments like that. So did your motorcycle break down during this whole time? Uh, you know, um, the worst thing I had was a flat tire. So would you call that your midlife crisis? How, were you, how old were you when you did that? I was uh, 69. 69. So not that long ago. No. You still had that motorcycle? I still, no, I don't have it now. Oh, one thing I was proud of though, when I got to um, Ushuaia, we were at the end of the road, literally the end of Route 4, which is, runs north-south 4,000 miles through Argentina. There's a sign there. You've reached the end of the highway. Um, and the, the South Pole is about 2,000 miles south of there. Oh Antarctica is 600 miles. Oh my goodness. Um, I stood on my head at that point and had my picture taken. And I felt that I was the oldest guy to ever reach that point and stand on his head when there. I did that because I thought when you're in, south, in the Southern Hemisphere, the world is upside down. So I <laughs> wanted to see it in the correct perspective. No one ever really appreciates that, but I, I, I did do that. So, I mean, you could actually stand on your head at that time? I could. Or were you leaning against a, a no. board or something? No, I had practiced that. Oh, my gosh. I've never been able to do that. I can still do that. Because I can hardly walk, so it's not, you know, it's to be expected. <laughs> I, I was uh, doing uh, yoga, and one of the things I like to do is stand on my head. I've not done that lately because uh, it's a little too stressful and traveling, but I still can do it. So he also, uh, again, that, that the motorcycle story alone could be an entire six weeks documentary. So that would be a neat thing. And he does radio shows and talk about that maybe later on. <clears throat> but you also, he was, Tom, was a veteran Navy during Vietnam. Right. And you were in Vietnam. Right. I, I graduated from college in the ROTC Navy. Which college was that? Uh, Just I went to hand. Holy Cross College okay. in Worcester, Massachusetts. And then I went into the Navy, and um, uh, I went to destroyers in Key West, Florida first, and then to riverboats on the Delta, in the Delta region of Vietnam for a year. But then I went to staff in Tokyo, Japan. I was in Vietnam uh, at the same time as John Kerry, who's now our ambassador on environmental matters. Uh, he was on the big boats in the Delta, and I was on the small boats uh, near the Cambodian border. It's an exciting time, not one I enjoyed at the moment, but looking back, um, I got through it okay, and I'm happy that I did. And I notice he has about a quarter size uh, anchor tattoo on his <laughs> left arm here. And uh, in case my viewers have forgotten, I have a challenge right now linked above. If I get a, uh, up to 340 subscribers and some other things by October 15th, I'm going to get myself a tattoo. I'm uh, not sure if it's going to be an, uh, an anchor, Navy anchor, but you just never know. Maybe I'll get my picture of Tom there on my arm as an honor, Mark, honor of you. Mark and I talked about this yesterday. I have to <laughs> polish it up every now and then. This tattoo is 50 years old. Whew. I got it in Copenhagen in, I guess, uh, in the early 1970s. And uh, while I was traveling back from Japan, after I got out of the Navy, I took the Trans-Siberian Railway across uh, the Soviet Union. That's what it was called at the time, uh, to Finland, and then the, took a ship across the Baltic to Copenhagen. 
and that's where I got this tattoo. I'm thinking of getting another one. I'd like to get one every 50 years. <laughs> so what's this one going to be? This one is going to have the initials of my grandkids somehow in a huh. symbol. Well, you know, we can go right in town here <laughs> over to Old Crow's Custom Tattoo oh, okay. and get you one today. Well, if I get one, then you can get one. No, I have to wait till I get 340 subscribers. I've got... 13 more to go. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Like the video, subscribe to my channel here. So what's it like living in that? How long is your travel trailer? Oh, it's 16 feet. 16 feet. So some, they've, some of my viewers have seen my travel van, which is 21 feet, but that includes the motor and all that part. So it's probably about 16 feet of living space. So what's it like three months in that? Well, um, I'm not one to get claustrophobic. Uh, so it doesn't bother the size of the space doesn't bother me, and I have a um, a shower and a toilet and a sink and a refrigerator and an air conditioner and those are the essential things. And um, I find if I'm in a place that's comfortable like here, I can get out and walk around a little bit. I like to not so much stay in the trailer but see the local areas. Everywhere I've been. I spent at least a day seeing the local downtown, so it all, all across the country. And that was actually my business. I was in redevelopment uh, as a city planner. I worked in many places in 35 different states. So it's kind of fun to visit small towns and see what's changed. Like today we were in Landrum, yep. Landrum and you can see the progress they've made. And when Mark first came here, that was a rundown place, and that's uh, really improved. It's really kind of nice. Yeah, it's a thriving little city. It's and, a thriving little uh, city. And there are others. That's not the only one. There's at least five or six within 25 miles of here. Oh, yeah. This is a great location. I'm, I'm trying to convince them to move here instead of Raleigh. Raleigh's about <laughs> three and a half, four hours away. You know, my city, yeah. Gary Raleigh area, uh, home yeah. of NC State University and... Uh, North Carolina, whatever, whatever, some other universities. UNC. Yep, UNC's ne nearby and Duke. And Duke. Research I, Triangle. I would love to be around here. I love this, the life that, um, the ability to have some property and how about well, The country life. Country life. Uh, although I decided the reason I'm moving is to be near my grandkids. They're five, three and a half, and half a year old. Wait, well, I got this good idea then. Since your daughter in law works from home, and the son's usually at home. Have them move up here. What's the draw for Raleigh? <laughs> That's an idea. There you go. Yeah. The schools here are excellent. Rated some of the top ones in the state. And that's public schools. Well, well, they also have a great chain of breweries and brew pubs around here. They do. We were at one yesterday, oh, Iron Key. Iron we went Key. to a really neat one, and I have a brochure about all of the breweries within this part of Carolina, North Carolina, and it's amazing. It was amazing. And of course, we're only a mile or so from the South Carolina border, and there's probably the same number down in towards Greenville. Oh yeah, Greenville, Spartanburg, they have them too, yeah. So they would enjoy that. The trouble is that they have a young family, and they don't want to be more than a f 10 minutes from a, um, a Walmart superstore. Or well, I have to admit, we're more than 10 minutes from a superstore. We've got a good hardware, good supermarkets, but Walmart's 25 minutes away and three different directions so you can take your pick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There's one other thing too. My my son, my son, my uh, daughter-in-law is from a family from India and she, they are very um, multi-ethnic in their food and they like to go to Asian supermarkets and buy fresh Asian spices and all that and that is available in Raleigh. And that's kind of important. That's yeah, I don't think Columbus has an Asian food market yet. No. There's a couple of Chinese restaurants around and a Thai restaurant, but I don't think there's an Asian food right. market. But, uh, right. you know, you can get that on Amazon, I bet. may not be fresh. <laughs> so, Tom, before we wrap this up, you know, I'm in search of swagger. You definitely have swagger. Do you have any advice for me to get some swagger here <laughs> at my age, approaching your age? Well, Mark, I would just say that... Be you, nice. I I would say, is a tattoo going to help put it that way? No. no. I would just say, you don't realize it, but you have swagger. Well, the I, real kind of swagger <laughs> is when you don't think about it and you don't talk about it or try to develop it. You just have it. You know, I like the way this man talks. <laughs> and in your own way, you have a kind of a country swagger. There you, and I didn't mention he's also a minister. You can tell he's <laughs> preaching right now. Well, Tom, it's great to have you on the show. 
Thank you. My first one in this new segment called Conversations from the Road. Road's right over there, but he's on the road. And sometimes I'll be on the road. It's great to be with you. Thanks, Mark. Well, thanks for being here. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and come back often. This is Mark, The Country Life with Columbus Mark. Welcome to my neighborhood, signing off.